I promise you, if you love pizza, you need to watch this video. Whether you're new to pizza or you've been doing this for over 50 years, I promise you're probably gonna find some value in this. I'm gonna go through my process from start to finish, so let's get right into it. First thing we're gonna do is the dough. So we're gonna make the dough right now. I'm gonna give you my simple process that I use, and then you can make it your own and take from it what you want. Disclaimer, this is all naturally leavened. I'm not using manufactured yeast. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just not using that today. You can do everything we're doing today with dry yeast that you get from the grocery store. Let's start with water, vessel. This is what we're gonna mix in. So today we're using 800 grams of water. This ice was made from filtered water, so we're gonna add water to this. We uh, filter our water through the AquaTru. Uh, we actually have two of them, and we bulk it into a big uh, vessel so we can have easy access to the water. By the way, this video is not sponsored by anybody. I'm gonna be name dropping some brands that I you know, prefer, that I use. No sponsors, just uh, maybe some shouts out. I will say, again, not sponsored, but the AquaTru has been absolutely fantastic as of course, drinking water, but for pizza making, the Aqua True uh, yields a water that just, it, it maintains the minerals. I just feel like it makes an amazing uh, water that you can use for baking, pizza, sourdough, all that stuff. Now, 800 grams of water, we're going in. I'm gonna strain it just so we don't get ice in there. We're doing 800 grams of water. I'm gonna do 750 in here, and the other 50 grams I'm gonna use to hydrate my salt. Now, I'm gonna take a separate vessel, take 50 grams of water which will bring us back to 800 so i almost liquefy the salt because when i add that to the dough it's not going to be crunchy or crystallized i'm going to hit this with 31 grams of salt i am using diamond crystal this is my personally my favorite salt again not sponsored i just love diamond crystal it has good texture it has uh, it's fine and it melts in pizza dough very well if you're making pizza this is a great salt to use and so now i'm just going to mix that salt and that water so here we have our ice cold water cold water allows me to control the fermentation as opposed to having the fermentation control me if that makes any sense now we're going to hit it with our flour today we're using 1250 grams of total flour. So if you're like, what flour do I use? Find something with high protein. Don't overthink it. Don't let the pizza geeks freak you out. Just use high protein flour, either bread flour. Um, I use Caputo personally, but you know, you can use whatever you want as long as it's clean and it's in a high protein category. So now we're going to add our flour to the water. So we have 1,250 grams or 1,250 grams of flour in total. So we started with cold water, then we added our flour. Now we're gonna mix this before we add our sourdough starter. If you're using commercial yeast, if it's instant, you can add it now. If it's dry yeast, you have to hydrate it with water. Carefully scrape those sides. All right, so that was a very quick mix, obviously. We don't go nuts, just make sure the water and flour incorporate. There she is. I'm not gonna go crazy on the autolays. I'm gonna keep it simple. We mixed our dough and our flour. Now we're gonna add our yeast, measure it out, put it back on the mixer. And now we're gonna add our yeast. In this case, happens to be a naturally leavened sourdough starter that I brought from New York. This sourdough starter is about right here. It started about right down here. So we're at the falling point, meaning where it's gonna start to fall and deflate. And that's the money point for me. We're using sourdough starter at 375 grams. If you're using commercial yeast, Think about it like this to make it easy. For every 100 grams of sourdough that you would use, if you're gonna replace it with a commercial yeast or instant yeast, for every 100 grams, use one gram of dry, active, or instant yeast. Now, if you're doing longer fermentation, maybe you do 0.5. So for every 100 grams of sourdough starter, you do 0.5 grams of yeast. 375, we're going in. So this sourdough is 100% hydrated. Now we're gonna add our salt. Not only our salt, a little bit of the water that we would have originally added. If you're gonna do this recipe and you don't wanna do this, just add the water and then add the salt raw dog at the end. I just feel like it helps the salt melt into the dough a, a lot quicker. Now, olive oil. For this recipe, I'm gonna do 10 grams. And now we're gonna mix. So here we are, we mixed our dough until it got incorporated very well. About 10 minutes, you can go as much as 14 minutes. I did about 10 minutes. Take our dough and we're gonna go right on our table. Now, if you're using commercial yeast, you're good. At this point, you're gonna start portioning your pizza dough balls. We're using sourdough, so I'm gonna do what's called a stretch and fold. I'm gonna do a couple stretch and folds, which means I'm gonna stretch 
and fold. I'm gonna cover it with a damp towel and let it sit for about 20 minutes. After we do our second stretch and fold or our third, at that point, we will start to portion our dough. One of the most important things you could do is temp your dough after you mix it. Right now I'm at 67 degrees Fahrenheit. When it starts to get to like 72, 73, your dough is gonna start fermenting. So this is a good temperature for me that allows me to uh, stretch and fold, have it at room temperature, portion it, and not allow it to over ferment. Dampened towel that I soaked with water. I'm gonna be portioning these pizza doughs in these pizza vessels. These are something you can find online. Before we portion our dough, we're gonna find out how much this whole thing weighs. 2,436 grams. And for me, every ounce is an inch. All right, so we're gonna split this up into seven portions at 12 ounces or about 340 grams. Um, I like grams, but whatever you wanna do. So you have this slab of dough and you're like, how do I make this into a pizza ball? I basically, I'm tucking and I'm rolling. So I'm just tucking the outside into the inside and I'm picking up and starting over here and doing the same thing. I'm working from right to left. And then when I feel this, I can feel this is starting to stiffen up, right? This is the bottom, this is the top. And I just take my hands and just hug it with your hands and do circles. The dough ball is moving clockwise. My my hands are moving counterclockwise. And then I end up with that. I like to do a couple pinches, that's it. Nothing crazy, just simple, and then right in. So in total, we have seven dough balls that we made and we have them here stacked up. We're gonna put these in the refrigerator overnight and then tomorrow is when we will be able to bake these guys off when they're prime. You saw the process of how I make my pizza dough. Now that dough ball that we made has been in the refrigerator for two days. So now's when we actually make a pizza. So this is a half semolina, half flour. If you want, you could just use straight uh, semola from Caputo. I'm kind of a copper geek, so like I'm using a copper bowl here. There's no reason for that. It's just like, I like copper. What are you gonna do? The style of pizza I'm doing today, it's kind of like a New York sourdough with wood fire. We'll put a little flour on top of the pizza. This is a bench scraper or a bowl scraper. And I like to take these and just kind of come underneath the dough ball to release it. And then once we release it, we'll put it in the flour. We're gonna go on our bench and stretch the dough. The reason I put this in this bowl of flour, this is common in pizzerias, you just cover it with flour so it doesn't stick to the, you know, stick to the board. I like to start at 12 o'clock and just press down gently and then start turning the dough clockwise. And as I turn it clockwise, I'm building somewhat of a crust. So I kind of always keep my fingertips towards 12 o'clock, but my, my palms are connected like this and my palms are actually pressing on the dough. And then once we did that enough, now we start at 12 o'clock and we press down with our palms, not just our fingertips. You're not digging your fingertips in here. You wanna take both of your hands and press every surface connection down flat. One, two, three. From 12 down to six. And then you go to 11 down to the other side, right? And then you go to one o'clock and you come down. And you turn it 90 degrees and you do the same thing from 12 down to six, from one down to four or five, you know, from 11 down to seven or eight. And now what I'll do is I'll take my hand and I'll keep turning it and just pressing gently. And now you can do what's called the stretch, right? So turn and pull, turn and pull, turn and pull, right? So pressure, turn, pull. Pressure, turn and pull. As you turn, you pull just a little bit. Now this is like what we did in pizzerias. You're probably not gonna be comfortable with this if you're new to pizza, but if you're not, just put it in your hands and start doing like this situation where your knuckles are doing the work. We should do a separate video on that. So this is actually 13 inches. This is a six ounce ladle. I'm, do, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do about five ounces of sauce and spread it. And then I'm using Grande East Coast, which is half whole milk, half part skim. And I'm gonna go light, and I'm doing some fresh mozz here, just like sprinkling my fresh mozz. See that? That's the bottom. This is the last pie that came out of the oven. Let's get a little something, something. That's how we're looking right here. Yeah, it's fire. 
Mm-hmm.